trench report today and it is not good news for those folks looking to buy in our market. Demand seems to be ramping back up again and interest rates they're climbing as well. It's not all bad news. I'll give you the latest starting right now. We put out this trench report about once a month to give those of you that are considering buying or selling in our market, or those of you that are just interested in tracking our housing market, we're giving you the boots on the ground view of what it's really like. I'm Jessica Janung with Active Realty and the Janung team. Thanks for checking out our channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we're going to get right to it. If you were watching our November and December videos, um, the market it was getting noticeably better for home buyers. We were getting many offers accepted for clients on the first or second attempt. All of our longer term clients that we were struggling to get offers accepted for had found homes and the market was starting to feel easy, which was so nice for a change after such a crazy competitive year. But now the market seems to be ramping back up again, as I predicted in my 2022 forecast video. I'm scared to see what the spring buying season is gonna bring, quite frankly. We're starting to see lots of multiple offers again. Um, we had one just this week that we were up against 17 offers. Um, I thought that we were gonna be up against a few, but even I wasn't expecting that many offers. Um, our clients were miraculously chosen um, for this home, and the next step um, is the home inspection. That's uh, Chris is gonna be attending that today. Also today, Chris told me that he was attending an open house for another client. It's a nice house in a secluded part of Red Hawk that's up on a ridge and overlooks this nice dog park. And it's on the northeast side towards wine country on Red Hawk Parkway. It has a pool, a view. Um, like I said, it's in Temecula and it's zoned for Great Oak High School. So these are three big factors that make a property highly desirable. Um, so he pulled up early to check it out before the clients arrived and he happened to see um, our buyer agent Scott, um, someone on our team, um, with another client, unplanned. We Scotty sighting out in the wild. Speaking of Scott, we are going to be introducing him to you real quick. He's going to be helping us make some videos coming up very soon, so you'll get to meet him. Anyway, back to the open house. There were probably about 10 groups coming and going in the few minutes that Chris was there, he said. Um, so there was probably about 20 people in groups of two or three with their agents. Um, he was talking to the listing agent who said that it was the busiest open house she had ever had. She had been in real estate for 17 years, she said, and it was the busiest she'd ever seen. So um, he also said, laid out on the table, there were probably 30 or 40 realtor cards that were kind of just, you know, fanned out like a, a deck of cards at a blackjack table. We like to reference our casino background. Our point of that story is that our hunch and what we predicted in the 2022 market prediction that things are going to be ramping up again now that we're done with the holidays um, seems to be coming true in a big way. Digging into some macroeconomics, the Federal Reserve has said that they are prepared to fight the inflationary pressures with a series of interest rate hikes this year. Jerome Powell, he has said to expect three interest rate hikes this year. The first of these rate hikes is anticipated to begin in the spring. They are going to try and cool off this market a little bit. As you may have heard, we have had the highest inflation that we have seen in 40 years. Unemployment is very low, job wage gains are strong, and the stock market is strong, and the price of houses, as we know, it is marching upwards. But JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon, he is predicting six or seven interest rate hikes possibly this year. Dimon says that there is a pretty good chance of being more than four and uh, other people have speculated this as well. Rates have already been rising a little bit. In mid-December, rates were at about 2.875, and today's rates are at about 3.25. So on a $700,000 loan purchase, that is a $140 payment increase in just one month. Um, these rate hikes, they can really affect buyers who are pre-approved at um, lower levels, and some loan pre-approvals are gonna have to be recalculated now that the interest rates are rising. We'll talk about our personal business a little bit. Um, last month, we had four clients buy resale homes and we had two clients move into new construction. Two of our clients that bought resale homes, we were actually able to negotiate the list price down a little bit, um, which is one of the advantages to buying over the holidays, not as many buyers out looking. One, we negotiated down $100,000 under the list price, um, but as you may guess, it was already overpriced a little bit. This seller strategy on the pricing 
probably helped keep a little bit of competition away. But the way that January is starting out, I don't think we're gonna be as lucky by the looks of it. Um, when you get 17 offers on a home, that almost always means that the price is going way up and over. We just did a video on December stats a few weeks ago, but we did not mention the months of supply. In December, there was only 0.7 months of single family home inventory in Temecula and Murrieta and one month supply in Menifee. So this means if there were no new listings that were to come to the market, we would sell through all of the available inventory in about 21 days or 0.7 of a month. Um, we are at an even lower month supply than we were in January of last year, which which was 0.9 months in supply. In January of 2019, which was three years ago, just to give you some comparison, we were at three months of supply. So our current low levels of inventory is the lowest I have seen in my real estate career, which started in 2009. New construction is the same story with the inventory drying up. The past couple of months, it was getting easier for our clients in some of the communities um, because they were beginning to have some standing inventory and they were not completely selling out the phase releases and going through the wait list. Um, this was so nice for my clients not to have to sit on a long late li uh, wait list, but now a lot of that inventory has sold and unfortunately the wait lists are forming again and the waits are getting longer. Let's chat briefly about what is happening with COVID in our area. So the numbers, they're up again, like they are elsewhere in California and across the country. Some businesses and schools are having to close due to staffing shortages. So this is a little different than the closures last time that were kind of mandated. These are not voluntary, but they're forced to because of the staffing shortages. So um, Starbucks had to close early. I saw people all up in arms about it on social media. Um, the deli counter at my grocery store was closed due to unforeseen circumstances circumstances. I'm sure it was COVID. You know, that whole area was dark. It was weird to see. Um, one of my sons goes to a, a church preschool and they have been forced to close because of COVID shortages because a bunch of people have it, um, even though they said they really held out trying not to have to do that. So um, a lot of closures right now. My neighbor, she works in quality control at a hospital not too far from here. So she's in management, but because the staff, like the floor staff, uh, it, is so busy, they are asking management to go support the floor staff. She's having, you know, put the scrubs on, go to work, support them because they're at a really high capacity right now. Uh, one thing that we've been taking advantage of, like my four-year-old, he was sick. He's actually been kind of sick a couple times this week um, where he had, you know, a fever and a cough and we were able to go get um, COVID tests from the school. So we were able to pick up, uh, one day we were able to pick up like a to-go kit, do the home kit, that came negative, thank goodness. And um, and then another day we were able to take them down to the school district and, you know, the professionals did the test that, that came back negative as well. But that is so nice to have, um, we have some more testing resources available through the school currently. Public schools are still open. Like my older son, he's in public school and uh, those are still open. So hopefully they hang in there. We have been in an unprecedented economic situation. After COVID hit, it seemed that we were at risk to go into a global recession or worse yet, a depression. So the Fed took massive action using every tool that they had in the toolbox, basically. Um, we recovered quite quickly for the most part, um, but I will say that now we have the opposite problem with an overcorrection. So, um, and I believe that this is the cause of the inflation is because we have an overcorrection. So we're gonna see if they can get it to balance out or not. So what's the good news after all this doom and gloom? Well, it is great news if you are a seller and don't have to turn around and buy a replacement home, of course. And even if rates do head um, closer to 4% towards the end of this year, these rates are still historically very low. Um, I bought my first house in Murrieta in 2010, and I remember the rates were kind of floating, like it was like five and a quarter, and they went a little higher, and I was like, oh, as soon as it gets back to five and a quarter, I wanna lock. They came down a little bit, I locked. I was pumped to get, you know, 5.25. Um, so uh, we, we historically, we have to keep it into perspective. Um, in the 80s, I think it was like right around 1981, interest rates, they were at like 16%. So 4%, even 5%. Um, I don't think it's going to be the end of the economic world. All right, I'm going to cut it there. I could go on and on, but I'll save it for another week. Thanks for watching. Bye.